Good morning and welcome to Flory Models Daily Show. Here we are Wednesday the 26th of October 2016. And first of all, thank you for all the questions and everything for the yesterday's Q&A live show. Loads of time, I think it was on for two and a half hours. But we managed to get through all your questions and we had some good ones at that. Right, so today I'm pretty much a little bit pissed off, I'll say, um, purely because of an incident that's happened overnight about a guy called Tim Okay, now Tim used to be a member of Flory Models, and to be honest, he's a very good modeler, I've got no problem with him, but his attitude is absolutely that of a child. Um, he seems to get great pleasure in taking, um, I don't know, the mick out of people, and his sense of humour isn't, I don't think, very good, okay? So because of that, he had a few warnings on our site, and after a few amounts of time, and lots of complaints from members, to be honest, um, he was removed from our site. Now, he goes on quite a prestigious list, because we've only actually banned five people ever in 15 years of Flory Models, so from that point of view, he did very well. But it's a few things I want to explain to the Gumpler group, uh, that he's obviously on Facebook, posting about me, and the reasons why I do it, and everything else like that. So first of all, I just want to explain, I do this to bring attention to the hobby, okay? I don't actually do it financially, I don't need this financially, I've got other things that sort of support me financially and everything else like that, okay? So from that point of view, uh, I really just try and bring people to the hobby that I absolutely love and adore. So it doesn't matter if I'm doing sort of Gumpler stuff, if I'm doing, you know, sci-fi stuff, if I'm doing, you know, ships, armour, planes, whatever. All I'm trying to do is get people back into the hobby uh, or get people started in the hobby. So there's lots of times where I will do a fantastic build, something like a super build that we've done in the past, everything else. And there's other times I'll build stuff straight out of the box, okay? So the big thing that's come up over this, and he's been shouting about it, and being, I think, very disrespectful, not to actually me, because, you know, big shoulders, and quite frankly, I'm used to this, but I think he's been very disrespectful to the, uh, the Gundam community at whole, because he's making them sound like complete idiots by saying about what I've done is spray everything on the sprue, and the reasons why I've done it and everything else, which is quite ironic, because I haven't posted any of this video up online yet. I'm still building it, working on it. The first part would have gone up today, but I'm gonna, well, I don't know, I might not even show it yet. I'm not sure which way I'm gonna do this, because quite frankly, it's upset me quite a bit purely because of the way we've done it so you know traditionally I don't do things like this but clearly the painting on this is terrible because I painted it all on the sprues and as you can see there's giant lines and joints and everything again it's quite ironic when the person and everybody who's talking about it hasn't seen any of this so but as obviously clearly you can see that painting on the sprues is a really bad bad thing because it's well it doesn't work does it Personally, I think you're all idiots. Uh, what's wrong with painting on a sprue? Sorry, uh, you know, it, it's my choice how I paint. Who can dictate how it paints? I don't tell you that you shouldn't do it. I don't say that I should do it. If I was to build another one, I probably wouldn't do it that way. But this way, I think, is the quickest and easiest way to get people into the hobby okay and into this community and into you know Gundam and Gumpla and everything else like that okay I know nothing about it whatsoever I'm just trying to draw people's attention to this side of the hobby to get people involved in modeling okay at the end of the day and that is what it is literally all about by painting it on sprues what I was trying to do is for somebody who's new to this when he's coming in and you're getting quite daunted by sprues and sprues and sprues like this, and he's thinking, I've got to paint each one of those individually and it's going to be a right ball lake. I'm trying to show him a slightly different way and a quicker way of doing it so you can produce something like this guy really quickly without having to mess around with it. Now, if you do want to mess around with it and paint everything as an individual and put, you know, a hundred cocktail sticks and do each part and then put them all together, that's fine. That's totally up to you. But that is your choice. This is my choice. And I'm trying to show people how quickly they can build one of these fantastic kits because let's face it, they are amazing. And, you know, I've been saying it for years. Uh, that, you know, they don't need glue, they can go together very cleanly, they don't technically need filler and various bits and pieces. So you can come along with um, and paint something relatively a day's painting, like it took me a day to paint all of this, and then we come along and uh, we can just assemble it straight off the bat with no problem at all, and that's why I've done about it. But having comments, and you know, obviously I've stirred up a little bit of a hornet's nest with, you know, the community about painting on sprues, really. 
if this is all you've got to worry about, I would really seriously have a word with your mum and dad because I think they'll tell you in the world there's a lot more to worry about than painting on a sprue. Okay, you know, because at the end of the day, it's my kit. It's not your kit. If you were paying me to do it as a commission, I would probably do it this way as well. Because what you don't know is what I do after this yet, do you? That's the whole point. You're coming to assumptions about it. You haven't seen me once I've got it together, go over there and touch in and respray and all the bits and pieces that go with it and take care of all the sprue tabs afterwards. But what I was trying to do was show people about this great community and all you've done is put it back because you sounded like idiots. And that's the whole point. This entire hobby is surrounded by idiots like you guys who make fuss and it makes it sound, I'm not being funny, if I was new to this and read what you guys have been put up there, forgetting it's against me, I think, God, no, not for me. You know, and that's what you're doing, you're destroying the hobby. And it's not just you, Tim, who obviously have this hatred thing and go around disliking everything, yes, we know it's you, but the thing is, it's everybody in general in this hobby. And this is my rant for today. I know a couple of you were saying yesterday you, you love my rants. Well, you're getting one today. Why is it there's this sort of thing about having a go at another modeler for what he does uh, and the way he does it, or another modeling site in general? A lot of people think there's a giant thing between us and ISM and all the rest of it. They're a completely different thing to us. They are nothing like us whatsoever. Yes, they have similar products. Yes, they've copied our products and all the rest of it. Yes, they copy everything we do. But at the end of the day, their business model is nothing like ours. You know, that's like people saying about we're the same as like with um, Jeff uh, and stuff like that and other sites and Bobby Waldron and things like that. We all have our own little thing. And we all actually get on quite well together normally, you know, but the thing is the members seem to make this rift between sites and all the rest of it that really isn't there. You know, at the end of the day, everybody should be coming together to make this hobby bigger, better, stronger, friendlier. And all I've ever tried to do is give a place where modelers can come, display their work, ask questions without having that sort of thing of people, what are they going to say? Am I going to look an idiot? You know, is that a stupid question? No, of course it's not. There's no such thing as a stupid question in this hobby. We've all had them. But hopefully our site, and the reason we're different to all your other ones out there, is because you can ask that question. You can ask the most daftest, stupidest question you like, and you will get a good response from it, and a fair response, okay? And, you know, hopefully a helpful response and everything else. And then you will then, when that question gets asked again, can tell them it. And that's the whole point to it. But my point to all of this is why is it everybody just seems to want to make themselves that little bit better? You know, why is that? It's almost like you're trying to downtrod everybody else as in, well, we're better and all the rest of it. I've been doing this for 15 years. I've been building professionally as my living for 15 years. You know, doesn't that tell you something? Like, really, I don't need this. I could just go back to doing commission work. Absolutely, no problem at all. I could have commission work lined up for probably 25 years, no problem whatsoever, and not have to do a single video and sit here and build and still have the same standard of living. But I don't. I turn it all down because I love doing this. I love spreading the word of the hobby. It's a great thing. And I think some, you know, like obviously Bandai, you know, Gumpla and General are probably the future. But I must admit, it's left a really, really bad taste in my mouth now against the people who are obviously part of this, what seems to be elitist, which is the worst thing you could ever have. Okay, at the end of the day, I am not actually a very good modeler. I might be a good storyteller and a good tutorial guy to sit here, and you guys seem to love watching me for hours on end, you know, and to sit here and show you how to do it, but I am no means the best. There's modelers out there, there's modelers on my site, there's probably modelers on your site who are a million times better than me and a million times better than you, okay? But the whole point to it is, hopefully you're learning from them. You're there sort of... It, delivering it in a way that you can simply understand it, take the techniques, okay, and their tutorials, and improve your modeling. So then hopefully somebody will come to you and you can improve your, their modeling and all the rest of it. And that is the thing to all of this. Forget this negativity and all this bullshit that's really going around, because let's face it, it really is childish, and you're looking like complete idiots. And I can pull the pin on my site Literally, bring up the drawbridges, make everything hidden, and nobody will see anything from Flory Models ever again. And we'll have our community of four and a half thousand members and in our nice little bubble, and don't have to put up with any of this bullshit. But unfortunately, there's lots of people out there who like to make waves, and you shouldn't. 
And I know guys who have had YouTube channels, Facebook pages and everything who have been destroyed by negativity out there in the hobby. Okay, and it's got to stop. It really's got to stop. Or really, everyone should just band together and club on these groups who love to pick on everybody else's. We don't pick on anybody, you know, but other ones seem to love to peck and chip and everything else and go ahead instead of just saying, right, well, they're doing their thing, I'm doing my thing, and everything else like that. It's no different from us or online gaming. You don't have a go at an online gamer, you know, even though he's, he has a group and a following and everything else, and there it is. It doesn't matter what it is, what hobby you're in, sports, motor racing, football, and all the rest of it. At the other end of it, you all need each other, because if you haven't got each other, you haven't got a hobby, you know? And at the end of the day, that will be it, you know? Already, the hobby is starting to struggle. I can see it, trust me. I see it from a different side to you guys. I see it from a business side. As I said, I do consulting work with companies, large companies and all the rest of it who pay me to look at their business and see where things are, okay? And where it's going and where it's gonna be in 10 years time. I can see that far ahead and it's got to stop. For the sake of the hobby and bringing everyone together, we need to get it in line. Everyone work together, everyone help each other and move on with the hobby to keep it strong. It's strong at the moment, but it's gonna get weak very, very quickly unless things move, okay? So that's what we need to do. So there we go, that's this morning's rant. So now, I'm in a dilemma. Do I carry on with this guy or we just kick him to the side and he goes on a shelf of doom? Because to be honest, it's left such a bad taste in my mouth, all of this, I can't be bothered with it, you know? And it is that thing about, you know, I can understand where people get it now. This is the first time I've ever had a real proper rant Okay, and it's one person, you know, Tim, you've done it for me, you've got right under my skin, but not so much that, it's the way you've sort of incited hatred, okay, and it's not even against that, it's because obviously you were saying how things should and shouldn't be, who are you to say? You do it your way, I do it mine, you know, that's see you do some of the stuff I've built, and then I'll pick the hell out of you for the way of doing it. Why? It doesn't matter how you do it. At the end of the day, build things as a whole, paint them separate, build them, just build it, just enjoy it. You should do it the way that it, you enjoy it. If that is painting each one individually, that's fine. But there's no law out there, there's no rule book and everything else like that. I don't turn around and say to my members, this is how it should be done. I try and change my build to everyone. We've got over 107 builds, full video built on the site now everyone. Some of them are really technical, very, very detailed. Some of them are really simple. That's the whole point. It's so everybody has a different way of doing it and it's what works best for you. Okay. So there we go. Rant over. So sorry about that. Bit of a rant this morning. And I must admit, didn't really fancy being in here at all. So I've been doing other things, been working with the sales team, various things, getting your orders out and everything else like that. But as you can say, it's gone, dusted, whoosh, Trust me, it won't be coming back. Anyway, so what this basically does is leave me now with a bit of a dilemma of what to build next. So I thought a couple of options for you. Okay, if what I'll do is I'll post a, um, a poll up down in the forum and then you can vote up which one you want. I've got a couple of reviews to do, we'll speak about in a moment. And then uh, starting on Monday, we'll be starting with a brand new kit. So first option up is the uh, Gloucester Meteor. Obviously then you can do choice of markings that you want me to do it in. Do we want to go with the sort of the metal finish, uh, the natural metal look, or with the camo over this one? Pretty much straight out of the box with it. I haven't got any um, goodies for this one, but there is some options in there and it'd be nice to get back to doing a little bit of airfix again. Uh, other option, uh, because we're thinking about sort of the natural metal finishes and things like that, because obviously that's what I was doing with the Gundam. But, um, so obviously we could go down this route. So down here we've got the, uh, I think this is the Academy kit, isn't it? Uh, F86 Sabre, the ultimate Sabre. Obviously this is the Adar one, so it's got the resin ejector seat and the Nices and some very nice markings down there as well. Okay, so that'd be an option if you fancy seeing some sort of metalizers and things like that. Um, this kit, to be honest, I've had kicking around for years. I I mean, absolutely, yep, you can tell by the dust. Um, so actually, I would love to do this one. So if you fancy seeing this one, obviously we'll be doing it in the aggressor scheme. It'll be your choice to see if we do it in the blue or we do it in the desert. So if we're gonna go with flanker or lizard uh, version of this one, but for the F5, love to do that one. Um, <clears throat> because it's been spoken about recently, I thought, yep, I'd still like to do it. Really much I'd like to do this one. So down here, we've got the scooter. Uh, so we've got the Skyhawk, obviously some nice markings on this one again, and to be honest, I've done all of those markings before, okay, but it'd be nice to do it. This one, this one again comes with the resin ejector seat, some very nice bits and pieces in that one as well, being the Eddard reboxing, so that's another option. And your last option, 
So quite fancy with one of these as well. Straight out of the box, some nice markings on this. And to be honest, I've got a shed load of decals for these from different squadrons and things like that if we didn't want to do it in this markings. But it's for the A7E Corsair. It's just that thing, because we've been working with some very nice kits recently, um, as in, you know, obviously the uh, Mitsubishi F1, it's lovely to do some of these older kits. They have their issues, you know, we have fit issues and we have some nasty seams and stuff like that, but it's all stuff that we can work with. So what I'm gonna do is I'll post a poll up in well on this bit of forum uh, if you're watching this in the forum now and you can vote up for which one you want to see me start on Monday and obviously we'll get on with that one so tomorrow is review day so I've got a couple of choices to be honest I think we're doing this one for tomorrow which is the rise of the bubble tops one it's a dual kit so down in here we've got the FW190 and we've got the actual Spitfire this does come with a beautiful piece of artwork as well which I'll show you which is a really nice touch with this particular kit so that'll be your review tomorrow and then I can start work on our first dual uh, get it out of the way We've obviously got this guy, uh, which will be a full review on it. And then after it, we're going to put it straight up against the AMK kit to see which one is best. Now, I literally haven't even looked in this box, so I don't know what it's like. Uh, it's going to have to go really, really a long way to beat the AMK one. So it'd be nice to see. So this will be up with you on Friday because it'll probably take a day of filming and then certainly a lot of editing to put this one right. Because it will be a full on review with all the details and everything else like that. So there we go. Sorry, it's not exactly a um, happy review today. Day, uh, and a happy build day and all the rest of it but as I say I just get sick and tired of the negativity in the hobby uh, and all the bits and pieces and it's very very frustrating as I say normally I bury my head in the sand and it's nothing to do with me but sometimes it really gets to me and recently it's starting to affect a few of my friends as well uh, and they are leaving the hobby it's as simple as that so don't be like Tim don't be a complete idiot be a nice modeler, be a good modeler, help the community, help to build it, help to sort of, you know, bring everyone closer together. All right, so there we go. Happy modeling, guys. I'll catch you all tomorrow.